In the Grand Beijing Prefecture Prison, Su Qian slowly woke up, inhaling the damp, rotting smell in the air, which induced a slight feeling of discomfort and a surge of stomach acid. What's this foul smell? Did my husky poop on my bed again? Judging by the intensity of the smell, it must have done it right above my head. Su Qian had a pet dog at home, a husky, commonly known as Era. After drifting in the north for 10 years, loneliness inevitably led to the desire for a pet for comfort and distraction, not in a physical sense, opening his eyes and looking around. Su Qian was taken aback, stone walls, three bowl sized square windows. And he was lying on a cold, dilapidated straw mat. Sunlight streamed through the square window onto his chest, dust particles floating in the beam, where am I? After a moment of contemplation. Su Qian seriously questioned his existence that I've time traveled, a tidal wave of memories rushed in, not giving him any time to react, forcefully invading his brain and quickly flowing through. Su Qian, styled Ningyan, was a constable under the jurisdiction of the Changle County government in the Grand Beijing Prefecture. His monthly salary was two tails of silver and a stone of rice, his father was an old soldier who died in the Mountain Sea Battle 19 years ago. Shortly after, his mother also passed away due to illness. Thinking about this, Su Qian felt slightly relieved that IT is well known that those who have lost both parents are not simple. Who would have thought that I would reincarnate, but still can't escape the fate of being a policeman? Su Qian gritted his teeth slightly that I in his previous life, he graduated from a police academy, successfully entered the system, and secured a stable job, however, although Su Qian had chosen the path his parents had set for him, his heart wasn't in the profession that he liked freedom, he liked a carefree life, he liked the glitz and glamour, he liked a line from Ji Xianling's diary. So he boldly resigned and went into business. But why am I in jail? He tried hard to digest his memories, and soon understood his current situation. Su Qian was raised by his second uncle since he was a child. Due to his long term martial arts training, he consumed more than a hundred tales of silver each year, which made his aunt dislike him. At the age of 18, after reaching the peak of refining his spirit, he stopped progressing. Under pressure from his aunt, he moved out of the Su's house and lived alone. Through his uncle's connections, he got a job as a constable in the government office. Life was good until, three days ago, his second uncle, who served in the Imperial Sword Guard, was escorting a batch of tax silver to the Ministry of Revenue. An accident occurred en route, and the tax silver was lost at a total of 150,000 tails of silver, the court was shaken, the emperor was furious, and personally ordered that Su Pingji be beheaded in five days, and his three generations of relatives be implicated. The male relatives were to be exiled to the border, and the female relatives were to be sent to the Jiafang Division. As Su Pingji's nephew, he was dismissed as a constable and thrown into the Grand Beijing Prefecture Prison. Point two days, in two more days, he would be shackled and sent to the desolate frontier, spending the rest of his life in hard labor. Starting off in hell mode. Su Qian felt a chill down his spine, his heart following suit, this world was under the rule of a feudal dynasty, where there were no human rights. What was the frontier? Desolate, with harsh climate, most of the criminals exiled to the frontier did not live more than 10 years. And many more died en route due to various accidents and diseases. Thinking about this, Su Qian's scalp tingled, and he felt a chill. System. After a moment of silence, Su Qian's tentative voice echoed in the silent prison. The system ignored him. System. System, dad, come out. Su Qian's voice was tinged with urgency. Silence. No system, there's actually no system. This meant that he had almost no way to change the current situation. In two days, he would be shackled and sent to the frontier. With his physique, he probably wouldn't die en route but this wasn't a good thing. Being exploited for labor in a life of servitude, then dying, too scary, too scary, Su Qian's beautiful fantasy of time traveling to ancient times shattered like a bubble, leaving only anxiety and fear. I must find a way to save myself. I can't just let this happen. Su Qian paced back and forth in the small prison cell, like an ant on a hot pan, like a wild beast trapped in a pit, pondering for a solution that I'm at the peak of refining my spirit, my physical fitness is terrifying, but in this world, I belong to the unyielding silver, escaping from prison is impossible, rely on clan and friends, the Su family was not a large clan, and its members were scattered all over the place. And a whole 150,000 tales of tax silver had been stolen, who would dare to plead at this critical moment, according to the laws of the Grand Fong, if the crime is compensated with merit, the death penalty can be avoided, unless the silver is recovered. Su Qian's eyes lit up fiercely, much like a drowning man grasping at a straw that he was a bona fide police academy graduate, rich in theoretical knowledge, clear in logic, extremely strong in reasoning ability, and had read countless cases, perhaps he could try to solve the case from this angle, recover the silver, and merit for his crime, but then, the light in his eyes dimmed. To solve a case, one must first look at the case file to understand the detailed process of the case. Only then can the investigation and solving of the case begin, now he was deep in prison, with no help from heaven or earth, and in two days, he would be sent to the frontier, no solution, Su Qian sat down on the ground, his eyes lost in thought that he got drunk in the bar yesterday and woke up in jail. 
Maybe he died of alcohol poisoning and then time traveled, did God give him the opportunity to time travel, not to let him live again, but to think that he died too easily? In ancient times, exile was a heavy punishment second only to the death penalty that I in his last life. Although he was beaten by society, at least he lived in a peaceful and prosperous age. You say it's great to be reborn, without a second word, he would steal his parents' savings and buy a house, then, with his mother's help, he would break his father's hands who loved to speculate in stocks, so that he couldn't become a leak. At this moment, the sound of chains sliding came from the end of the dark corridor, it should be the door opening. Then came the sound of footsteps. A jailer led a haggard looking handsome scholar to a stop in front of Su Chi and cell, the jailer glanced at the scholar, half an incense sticks time. The scholar saluted the jailer, and after watching the jailer leave, he turned to face Su Qian, the scholar was dressed in a moonlight robe, his black hair tied up with a jade hairpin, and his face was quite handsome, with sword-like eyebrows and starry eyes, and thin lips. Su Qian's mind surfaced with related memories of this person. Su's second son, Su Xinyan, the second uncle's biological son, Su Qian's cousin, who was admitted as a scholar this autumn. Su Xinyan looked at him calmly, I paid the soldiers escorting you to the frontier 300 tails, the last silver our family had. You can go in peace, there won't be any accidents on the way. What about you? Su Qian blurted out, he remembered that the original host and this cousin did not have a good relationship, due to his aunt's dislike, apart from his second uncle, the rest of the Su family did not like Su Qian very much. At least, the cousins and sisters would not show too much closeness to him, moreover, in the memory of the original host, this cousin was a master of sweet talk. Su Xinyan said impatiently, none of your business. After a pause, he lowered his gaze slightly, not meeting his cousin's eyes, his expression softened, survive. After saying that, he decisively walked away. Wait. Su Qian reached out of the bars and grabbed his sleeve. Su Xinyan stopped and silently looked at him. Can you get the case file? The case file of the lost tax silver. Su Xinyan frowned, what do you need this for? I want to know the details of the case, to understand how I ended up here. Otherwise, I won't rest, Su Qian said gravely. He chose not to say he wanted to solve the case directly, as Su Xinyan might think he had lost his mind. After all, the original Su Qian was known for his stubborn and obstinate character. Su Xinyan pondered for a moment, I've read the case files. I can tell you about it, these days, he had been running around for the Su family. The case was too big, no one dared to help, and there was no one to turn to. Out of desperation, Su Xinyan changed his strategy and tried to solve the case from the perspective of recovering the tax silver, using the Su family's connections and the relationships from the academy, as well as bribing with silver. Su Xinyan managed to get the officials of the Jingzhou prefecture to transcribe the case files for him, however, he had no experience in criminal investigation and judgment. So he had to give up. Su Qian interrupted him, write it down, verbal narration is meaningless. All the details of the case are in the text, which needs to be pondered and chewed over. If he had to listen, his brain wouldn't be able to think and analyze calmly. Su Qian's logical reasoning ability had always been unparalleled in his previous life, distinguishing him from his peers. Under normal circumstances, Su Xinyan would have ignored him. However, considering that this might be their final farewell, he agreed to his brother's last request and said quietly, Wait a moment. He hurriedly left, the sound of footsteps disappeared in the corridor. Su Qian sat down against the railing, his heart filled with unease and complexity. He was not sure about turning the tables. Wanting to solve the case was a desire, but so was his unwillingness to accept his fate, the only self-rescue method he could think of was this one. He had to give it a try, to struggle on his deathbed. In modern criminal investigation methods, crime scene investigation, surveillance, and autopsy are three indispensable components, the tax silver disappearance case didn't involve any deaths, there was no surveillance in ancient times, and he was trapped in prison, so he had no access to any of these three elements, fortunately. The case files could to some extent reconstruct the crime scene, while digesting the memories of the original host, he forced himself to suppress all negative emotions. Only a calm mind could have clear thoughts, conduct rigorous reasoning, and say, whether I live or die, it all depends on what comes next. As time passed, Su Xinyan hurriedly returned, handing him several sheets of paper with fresh ink. The time is up, I have to go, Su Xinyan hesitated, then said, take care of yourself. Su Qian didn't respond, his eyes already drawn to the words on the paper, the writing was hasty, and if Su Qian hadn't attended a private school for several years, he wouldn't have been able to decipher these strange symbols. Reading is indeed useful. If the original host was illiterate, it would have been game over, Su Qian said sarcastically, the course of the tax silver disappearance case was as follows, three days ago, at the second quarter of the hour of Mao, 5 to 7 a.m., Su Pingji was escorting a batch of tax silver into the capital. At the first quarter of the hour of Chen, 7 to 9 a.m., when they were on Guangnan Street and had just crossed the bridge, a strange wind suddenly blew. The horses were frightened and rushed into the river by the street, suddenly, a deafening explosion was heard. 
The river water erupted six feet high, and the waves were overwhelming, the soldiers responsible for escorting the tax silver jumped into the river to search for the silver, but only managed to recover 1,215 liang of silver. The rest of the silver vanished, in addition to the course of the case, there were also the testimonies of passers-by and the soldiers involved in the escort, among a series of testimonies, Su Qian noticed a sentence highlighted with a red cinnabar pen, a monster is at work. A monster? Su Qian's pupils contracted, and his heart sank, Jingzhou Prefecture, back hall, after three days of hustle and bustle, the three main people responsible for the tax silver disappearance case gathered together, Jingzhou Prefecture Chief Chen Hunguang, holding a white porcelain blue and white teacup in his hand, gently tapped the cup edge with the tea cover, his face serious, this officer, wearing a crimson robe and embroidered with clouds and geese, a positive fourth-rank official, sighed. Lightly, we only have two days left. The emperor has ordered us to recover the tax silver before Su Pingji is beheaded. We have to hurry. The two people referred to by Chen Hongguang were a middle-aged man in a black uniform and a dark cloak, with a high nose and slightly sunken eye sockets, and his pupils were a light brown color that he had half South Barbarian blood. The other was a young girl in a yellow dress, with a face like a goose egg, beautiful eyes, and radiant skin. She held a sugar cane in her hand. A small bag of deer skin and an eight-diagram geomantic compass hung around her waist, and under her skirt were a pair of small boots embroidered with cloud patterns swinging back and forth. These two were assisting in the case. The middle-aged man was called Li Yuchen, from an organization that the officials of Defone greatly feared, the Night Watchmen, the Night Watchmen were engaged in activities such as investigation, arrest, and interrogation. They also collected military intelligence and turned enemy generals, they didn't belong to the six ministries or the military system. It was the royal family's intelligence organization, and also the guillotine hanging over the heads of all officials, all officials of Defone had heard a saying, if you don't do anything wrong during the day, you won't be afraid of the Night Watchmen at night. And the girl in the yellow dress was from the Astronomical Bureau, a disciple of the Astronomical Bureau's supervisor, the middle-aged man with a silver gong embroidered on his chest glanced at the sugar cane residue spat out by the girl in the yellow dress at his feet, frowned, and with a twist of his palm, the air flow rolled, gathering the cane residue in one place, the middle-aged man nodded slightly, revealing a fleeting pleasure, then he replied to Chen Hongguang with a solemn expression, the case is shrouded in mystery and very strange. Perhaps we're going in the wrong direction. Where does Master Li get this idea from? Chen Hongguang furrowed his brows. Up to this point, the investigation had largely determined that a monster was at work and had stolen the tax silver. What we should do now is to catch the monster that caused the trouble as soon as possible, rather than thinking about these messy things, Chen Hongguang said that I in recent years, the national treasury has been empty, and there have been frequent disasters in various places. The 150,000 liang of tax silver is equivalent to the annual tax revenue of an ordinary county. It is understandable that the emperor is furious that I was already broke, and you made me lose even more money. I'm pissed off, Chen Hongguang took over this case diligently, and the burden on his shoulders made him unable to eat or sleep well recently, the middle-aged man shook his head and did not argue. Instead, he said, what new gains have been made from Su Pingji? Chen Hongguang shook his head, a mere warrior, he just keeps muttering that he's been wronged. He doesn't even know how the tax silver was lost. The girl in the yellow dress said indifferently, I've observed his, chi, he's not lying. Li Yechen and Chen Hongguang nodded, and did not continue to discuss this person. As the culprit, Su Pingji was the first to be investigated and interrogated. His interpersonal relationships and financial situation were all thoroughly scrutinized. Combined with the Astronomical Bureau's aura reading technique, he had been ruled out as a suspect. Of course, with the loss of the tax silver, Su Pingji was guilty of dereliction of duty and could not escape the death penalty. The serious faces of the middle aged man and Chen Hongguang showed their heavy hearts. Only the girl in the yellow dress, with the least pressure, was eating her sugar cane carelessly. It this moment. Footsteps were heard, and a bailiff hurried in, holding a small bamboo tube in his right hand and a bag of steaming meat buns in his left hand. The bailiff first handed over the bamboo tube, the girl in the yellow dress didn't take it, her starry eyes glanced at the meat bun. The bailiff wisely changed the order, and the girl in the yellow dress happily started to eat the meat bun, and then took the bamboo tube, pulled out a piece of paper, and unfolded it. My man said that there was no trace of a monster's aura in the river within twenty miles, and there were no traces on the bank either. Bang! The suppressed atmosphere finally exploded, and Chen Hongguang slapped the table in anger, his face turning green with rage, where could the 150,000 liang of silver have gone? It must have gone ashore. It's been three days, and we haven't even found a trace of the enemy. Damn it, what kind of monster dares to intercept the tax silver of my defone? I will make sure it is completely destroyed. If the tax silver can't be recovered, he will have to take the blame. The emperor won't care whether he's wronged or not. Once you sit in this position, you have to take responsibility, the officialdom is like this, it's hard to climb up, but it's easy to fall down, the middle-aged man, Li Yuchen, exhaled and continued the topic he had just started, could it be that the direction of our investigation is wrong? It might not be the work of a monster. 
Chen Hongwan looked at him, took a deep breath, and suppressed his anger, if it's not a monster, then where did the monster wind come from? How did the silver disappear into thin air when it entered the river? How did the explosion cause a water column several feet high and shake both banks? This question, no one could answer. Li Yechen asked, what's the reason for the monster to steal the tax silver? Chen Fuin pondered for a moment, monsters act without conscience, doing whatever they desire. To pursue the reason is just to seek trouble. The girl in the yellow skirt disagreed, isn't human flesh tastier? Wait, let me finish my bun first. She crunched on two large meat buns, her face turning into a small steamed bun, struggled to swallow, took a sip of tea, and then continued on the topic of human flesh, monsters act without restraint, silver may not be as tempting to them as living humans. Even if they wanted silver, it would be safer to steal or rob than to directly steal the tax silver. In Beijing, it's too risky to rob the tax silver in the street, Chen Fuin nodded, makes sense, it's not ruled out that it was instigated by someone. Li Yuchen squinted, so who would instruct the monsters to steal the tax silver? What's the reason? Why must it be this batch of tax silver, specifically 15,000 tails? We could think of it this way, the mastermind behind the scenes needs a large amount of money, but can't make too much noise. To be precise, they can't brazenly amass wealth. Chen Fuin had a thought. So they targeted the tax silver? The girl in the yellow skirt pursed her brightly colored lips. The route of the tax silver transport is random, decided on the spot by the captain of the Imperial Sword Guard, Su Pingji, but the monsters were able to ambush in the river in advance. There might be an insider in the transport team. Li Yuchen said, glancing at Chen Fuin, go to Yunlu Academy, find a Confucian scholar to question. The girl in the yellow skirt gave him a sidelong glance, are you looking down on our observatory's divination technique? I've already said, the soldiers who were transporting the tax silver at the scene were completely unaware. The train of thought was stuck again, and the three fell silent, the air suddenly became quiet. Li Yechen looked down at the case file, Chen Fuin sighed. The girl in the yellow skirt fiddled with the feng shui compass at her waist, thinking about leaving Beijing before sunset to go to the palace to scrounge for a meal from the princess. The royal kitchen's cooking skills are top-notch in the world, compared to them, the girl named Kai Wei in the yellow skirt was more of a guest, assisting in the case, she has no official position, although she is one of the persons in charge of the case. She does not need to bear too much responsibility, Chen Fuin's. Eyes flickered, tentatively saying, the case is progressing slowly, and time is of the essence, which is really worrying. Mr. Lee, why don't we go and ask Mr. Wei for advice? The middle-aged man gave him a sideways glance and snorted, you literary officials have a Beijing inspection, and we patrolmen have one too. To tell you the truth, this is a test given to me by Mr. Wei. Chen Fuin smiled bitterly, if this case can't be solved, I'm afraid I won't be able to keep my position. The whole court is watching us. The two looked at each other in silence, the atmosphere was heavy, if it's a monster's doing, then I'm out of options. Su Qianan turned pale, feeling the deep malice of the heavens, there are monsters in this world, the monster race has existed since ancient times, hunting and eating each other with humans. I in the vast mountains of the south, there is a country of 10,000 monsters, which is the largest gathering place for the monster race. 500 years ago, the western countries declared war on the country of 10,000 monsters in the south under the leadership of Buddhism, and fought a war that lasted for 60 years, finally leveling the country of monsters, this war was named the cleansing of monsters in the history books, since then, the monster race's luck has been damaged and they have gradually declined. Meanwhile, Buddhism has soared to the sky, and Buddhism and Taoism have flourished, using Su Qianan's knowledge from his past life to understand, humans won the struggle at the top of the food chain in this war. If the tax silver was taken by a monster, then he could only retrieve the silver to save himself and protect the Su family. As a peak practitioner of refining essence, Su Qianan felt that he couldn't turn the tide. I end the autumn season, the weather was damp and cold, and Su Qianan was sweating coldly. He was scared. With the integration of the original host's memories, he knew he could not escape from prison, and also knew that in this society where the imperial power was high above, human rights were too weak, life and death, all in the thoughts of others. He had fantasized about traveling back to ancient times to plagiarize poems and show off, thinking it was very cool, but reality slapped him hard. He was still being beaten by society after traveling through time. No, this is just a guess, this is just a guess from the Beijing government, I can't be influenced by their guesses, I'll do it myself, I'll do it myself to analyze, it can still be saved it can still be saved, the strong desire to survive quickly calmed him down, his logic became rigorous and clear again. Why would a monster want to steal tax silver, isn't human flesh delicious, even if it's short of silver, it doesn't have to target tax silver, I heard in the books that the monster women of the monster race are all charming and curvy, I don't know if there are cat women and dog women, slap. Su Qianan slapped himself, start reasoning again. 
The most important thing in reasoning is to subtract, to list the clues one by one and sort them out, otherwise, it's just a ball of wool, the more you think about it, the more confused you get, the two most obvious clues in the tax silver case, one, monster wind, two, explosion after the tax silver fell into the river, apart from warriors, all other cultivation systems have the ability to create monster winds, so, clue one, can only serve as evidence of a, cultivator's, involvement, and cannot give. A more detailed target, the suspicion of his second uncle, a warrior, was reduced, Although it did not rule out his collusion with others, the explosion in Clue 2 is an unreasonable suspicion, it's normal for high-level cultivators to cause explosions in combat. However, in this tax silver disappearance case, there is no physical confrontation, so the appearance of the explosion is unreasonable. Unless it had to explode. Su Qianin muttered. In all the cultivation systems, what profession needs to use explosions to achieve its goal? Su Qianin thought for a moment, didn't get a clue, then realized that he and the Beijing government had made the same mistake. The Beijing government's thinking went wrong from the beginning, judging from the most obvious clue in the case that the culprit was a monster, and then ran wildly down this road, never to return, this is not wrong, the problem is that this judgment is too hasty. Although Su Qianin had integrated his memories, he still thought mainly as a modern person, with the experience of his past life as the main factor, he preferred to peel away the layers of the case file, to chew on those less noticeable details, and then to make a conclusion. This road is temporarily impassable, so I'll change my approach and break through from elsewhere. I'll first eliminate the possibility that it's a monster causing trouble, and assume that this is a carefully planned, man-made event. Then, he must have left a flaw in the case. The Lokard's exchange principle tells us that whenever a crime is committed, there will inevitably be direct or indirect traces left at the scene, various traces can be divided into two categories, I can't remember the specifics, it should be footprints, fingerprints, carriage traces, tool traces, etc. The flaw is not in the two most obvious clues, but in these various traces, according to the description in the case file, Su Qianin replayed the process of his second uncle transporting the tax silver in his mind, adrenaline was pumping, brain cells were highly active. If pheromones could be mimicked, they would be like koi in a pond, frantically competing for food, the surface of the water boiling replaying it over and over again, scrutinizing it over and over again various pieces of information and clues from the case file converged, his brain was like a CPU running at high speed, with the piecing together of various pieces of information, the case became clearer and clearer. Unconsciously, Su Qianin felt like he had entered a certain state, his soul seemed to float up, breaking free from the physical body, breaking free from the building, and coming to the sky above Beijing, time seemed to flow backward, the east was slightly bright, the sun was about to rise, Su Pingji led a group of armored soldiers, escorting the tax silver to the Ministry of Revenue.At this moment, it was the second quarter of Mao. When they reached Guangnan Street, a gust of monster winds suddenly blew, the horses were frightened and rushed into the river, boom, there was an explosion on the river, and the muddy waves surged, this explosion seemed to also echo in Su Qianin's heart, he reflexively kicked his legs and woke up, his eyes showed exhaustion, but his face was full of excitement and joy. I got it, I got it, ha ha ha, I solved the puzzle. Su Qianin laughed wildly, hitting the bars hard, come here, come here, come here quickly. The guard on duty was alerted, carrying a fire stick, and scolded, making a racket, think you've lived too long. He hit the bars hard to scare Su Qianin. Su Qianin stepped back, let go of the bars, so as not to get his fingers broken, he said in a deep voice, I want to see the prefect. A common prisoner, seeing the prefect. You should take a piss and look at yourself. The guard laughed, sticking the fire stick into the bars, trying to poke Su Qianin. Su Qianin stepped back again to avoid it. You dare to dodge? The guard grabbed the keys from his waist, sneered, I'll break your legs today. I have important clues about the tax silver robbery case, I want to see the prefect, if you delay the case, you're responsible. Su Qianin stared at him, the guard's face stiffened, in the inner hall, the girl who had finished eating the meat buns continued to gnaw on the sugar cane, occasionally taking out a few candied fruits from her small deer skin bag to eat with it. On one side, the clouds were gloomy, on the other, she was carefree. The emperor ordered us to solve the case within five days, because if the time is too long, the tax silver may never be recovered. Chen Fuying paced back and forth in the hall, he couldn't sit still, but time is so pressing, we are at a loss. Solving a case takes time, the prefect slapped his palm and said in a deep voice, I'll personally go to Mr. Wei, give me the case file. Li Yuchen hesitated, I'll go with you. The girl in the yellow dress glanced at him and said with a charming smile, that's okay. With our grandmaster from Defong, you two don't have to worry about being questioned by the emperor. However, losing favor in Duke Wei's heart is much more serious than being questioned by the emperor. She laughed, revealing two shining white little canines, the middle-aged man's face darkened. A man in dark clothes from the Yaman walked in hurriedly with his head down and bowed, saying, Sir Prefect, the jailer has reported that Su Pingji's nephew, Su Qian, has just claimed to have important clues about the case of the stolen tax silver and wishes to meet with you. The three of them looked at each other simultaneously. Su Qian, 
if they remembered correctly, he was only a peripheral figure unrelated to the case. After the initial interrogation and torture, he was determined to be irrelevant to the case. Chen, the prefect, pondered for a moment and said, bring him in. Soon, Su Qian, in prison uniform and with dried blood stains on his body, was brought in by the Yaman runners. As he moved, his handcuffs and leg irons clanged loudly. The moment I stepped into the inner hall, I felt three sharp gazes cast upon me, the man in the scarlet robe must be the prefect, embroidered with cloud and geese, hmm, a fourth rank official. The uncle with a silver gong on his chest, oh, from the patrol organization. Damn, this girl is so beautiful. Is she married? A quick glance at her chest and Su Qian calmed down significantly. He quickly bowed his head, showing a very humble attitude. The prefect Chen sat high on the chair, his face expressionless, and his tone of questioning the criminals quite majestic. Su Qian, when you went to jail three days ago, you didn't say you had important clues. Do you know the consequences of withholding information? A seasoned official, even if he was desperate, would never ask about the clues directly, but exert psychological pressure instead. Being here meant that half of the plan had already succeeded. Su Qian was still relatively calm. Sir, my second uncle came to see me just now, and I asked him for the case file. Honesty first, all three present knew Su Xinyan, not because he was particularly famous, but because he was the eldest son of Su Pingji, the three hosts naturally had investigated him. What does this have to do with the clues you mentioned? Prefect Chen asked. The clue came from the case file, wait, Prefect Chen interrupted him, leaning slightly forward, from the case file? This was not what he had expected. I have solved the case. Su Qian nodded, indicating that this was the case, Prefect Chen suppressed his urge to call someone to take this kid back to the large cell, his face serious, tell me, but let me remind you, if you talk nonsense, 200 spanks can separate your flesh from your bones. The case of the stolen tax money was not caused by a monster, but by a human. One sentence stunned the three of them, Prefect Chen slammed the table and shouted, nonsense, come, drag him down and give him 200 spanks. The idea that tax money was robbed by a monster was almost a foregone conclusion, a consensus among the three hosts. If they had hoped that Su Qian could provide valuable clues before, now they were utterly disappointed that IT was nothing more than a desperate rant from a young boy. The middle aged man's eyes lit up slightly, and he waved away the bailiff who was rushing in Prefect Chen, don't be so hasty. He turned his gaze to Su Qian, with a look of scrutiny and expectation Tell me. This Prefect Chen seems to have a bit of a temper. Su Qian knew it was time for him to perform, according to the testimony of the city gate guards, my second uncle entered the city at the second quarter of the hour of Mao, and the convoy transporting the tax money arrived at Guangnan Street at the first quarter of the hour of Chen. At that time, a strange wind suddenly rose, and the horses were frightened and rushed into the river. He tried to make his tone neither humble nor arrogant, making himself look more calm, thereby increasing his persuasiveness, Prefect Chen nodded, this is why we concluded that this was a monster lurking in the river, waiting for an opportunity to steal the tax money. No! Su Qian retorted loudly, the strange wind was just a smokescreen, and the explosion in the river was also a smokescreen, in fact, to make you overlook a loophole, a fatal loophole. Prefect Chen asked anxiously, what loophole? The middle-aged man posed a listening attitude, the girl in the yellow skirt bit her candied fruit without chewing, her spirited eyes looking at Su Qian with interest, they had flipped through the case file many times and knew the course of the case like the back of their hands, but they had not noticed any loopholes. My second uncle transported 150,000 tails of tax money. May I ask you, how much does 150,000 tails of silver weigh? The middle-aged man's face stiffened, and the girl in the yellow skirt tilted her head, not quite understanding for a long time, Prefect Chen said unhappily, if you have something to say, don't beat around the bush. Su Qian originally wanted to give a hint so that the hosts could find this huge loophole themselves, but it seemed to backfire, your mental arithmetic ability is a bit low, you ancient people. Su Qian immediately said, it weighs 9375 gene. According to the mass conversion formula of this world, one gene is 16 tails, so 150,000 tails of silver is 9375 gene, the middle-aged man frowned, he had a vague grasp of something, the girl in the yellow skirt frowned, what does this prove? It proves that you're not very smart, Su Qian said, how far is it from the city gate to Guangnan Street? The middle-aged man replied, 30 li. How many markets do you pass through on the way? Four. What's the pace of a nag? Nag. The middle-aged man suddenly widened his eyes and stood up abruptly. He widened his eyes, revealing an expression of, so that's how it is, so that's it. Point three days of tracking and hunting for the monster's traces had yielded nothing, and this experienced patrolman had already realized that he might be on the wrong track, but there was no clear thought in his head, so he didn't take it to heart when it was denied earlier. Prefect Chen felt a little numb in his scalp because he still didn't hear. What was wrong, which made him, the prefect, seem particularly unwise, Prefect Chen glanced at the girl in the yellow skirt and felt a lot better, the girl in the yellow skirt said in frustration, where's the problem? The middle-aged man was somewhat excited, the timing, the timing is wrong. 
Guangnan Street is a full 30 li from the South City Gate. With the pace of a nag, and four markets along the way, it's impossible to arrive at Guangnan Street at the first quarter of the hour of Chen. He was influenced by the preconceived notion that this was a monster stealing the tax money, and after Su Qian's meticulous unraveling, he immediately chewed out the problem. But the tax money was indeed transported to Guangnan Street at the hour of Chen, and there were quite a few people who saw the horse rushing into the river at the time, it can't be fake. The girl in the yellow skirt said crisply, Prefect Chen nodded in agreement, what's the explanation for this? This. The middle-aged man was stunned and instinctively looked at Su Qian. Because what was being transported was not silver at all. Su Qian said categorically. Ridiculous. Prefect Chen retorted, not to mention whether your second uncle and the soldiers who were transporting it had eyes, the testimonies of the people present at the time were recorded in the case file. The horses rushed into the water, and the shining silver rolled into the water. He shook the case file in his hand, is this also fake? What you see may not necessarily be true. I'm willing to personally clarify the confusion for you, he said, his gaze falling on the desk, may I borrow some paper and a brush? Prefect Chen waved his hand, indicating that he could do as he pleased, dragging his shackles, Su Qian came to the desk, poured water to grind the ink, spread out the rice paper, and began to write in a clumsy manner. Sir, please prepare the items written on the paper according to my request. After writing, he handed the rice paper to Prefect Chen, Prefect Chen took the rice paper and glanced at it, completely puzzled. Let me see. The girl in the yellow skirt came over to join in the fun, reached out her soft, white hand to take the rice paper, then she was puzzled. The middle-aged man, Li Yuchen, glanced at the paper, made a poker face, unobtrusively pressed flat a corner of the paper that had been folded, and then handed it to Prefect Chen. A quarter of an hour later, two yamen runners brought the items in and placed them in the hall, the three officials glanced over the tools, then turned their heads to look at Su Qian, Chen Fuin said solemnly, everything you asked for is here. You must give me a satisfactory answer. His attitude had changed during the quarter of an hour, this official of the fourth rank had racked his brains for a long time, and had to admit that Su Qian's inference was very reasonable. But there were still many mysteries that had not been unraveled, such as the fact that the tax silver had indeed fallen into the river that he couldn't comprehend the mystery behind it. If I can help you solve this case, would you be able to plead with the emperor to absolve my family of guilt? Su Qian asked that I end the phone, the tradition of father-son inheritance was highly valued. A son could stand in for his father's crimes and merits. Of course. Chen Fuin nodded. Su Qian squatted down in front of the tools, a candle, salt, a porcelain cup, and a piece of iron wire, what he was going to do was simple, a basic high school chemistry experiment, extracting sodium metal. I in ancient times, this was impossible, as there were two difficulties, electricity and the melting point of sodium chloride but in this world, Su Qian knew there was a profession that could do it, the sixth rank of the astronomical bureau sorcerer, alchemist, the alchemists. Of Defone were well-known professions, their various inventions and creations had long been integrated into the lives of ordinary people. Su Qian wasn't certain that the exploding tax silver was definitely sodium metal, but it didn't matter. What mattered was opening a new line of thinking to explain the phenomenon of the tax silver explosion. I end the process of solving a case, bold assumptions and rigorous reasoning are essential preliminary work. Only after this can verification and evidence collection take place. I end his previous life, he had encountered a murder case that left a deep impression on him. The detectives worked all night, opening their minds to make several assumptions about the case's process. Based on this, they collected evidence, then they overturned all these assumptions and started reasoning again, the tax silver could also possibly not be sodium metal. In any case, an alchemist could achieve this, that was enough. To guide the officials back to the correct direction was what he needed to do, with the right direction, they could follow the clues and it wouldn't be difficult to find the real culprit. If they were still stuck in the thought of a monster causing trouble, the case would never be solved. Even if the case was solved in the future, he would have already left the court, sending you away, thousands of miles away, he dissolved the coarse salt in water, stirred it, then covered the top of the cup with raw rice paper, slowly pouring the salt water into it, after filtration, he placed the porcelain cup on top of the candle to roast it, stirring it continuously with a bamboo stick, soon, the salt water in the cup evaporated, and the crystals that precipitated out were sodium chloride, this was essentially a further purification of salt, Chen Fuin, the middle-aged man, and the beautiful young woman in a yellow skirt, Stood by and watched intently. Su Qian looked up and smiled at the young woman in the yellow skirt. You are a disciple of the Astronomical Bureau, aren't you? He had noticed the geomantic compass at her waist. No one would use this thing except the disciples of the Astronomical Bureau. The young woman in the yellow skirt hummed in agreement, smiling cheerfully. My master is the chief of the Astronomical Bureau. Her delicate and charming face was as flawless as a peeled egg. The disciple of the chief, it didn't matter what her chest looked like. Su Qian said softly, Can you help me melt these crystals? The melting point of sodium chloride is about 800 degrees Celsius, the young woman in the yellow skirt pouted, controlling fire is a skill only alchemists have, I'm just a geomancer. But my master gave me a magical tool. 
she changed her tone, took off the geomantic compass from her waist, fiddled with it a few times with her jade green fingers, inputting her chi, and the word fire lit up. Back off. Su Qian immediately retreated. The next moment, a bright and dazzling flame spewed out, engulfing the porcelain cup. Stop. Su Qian immediately shouted stop, then quickly inserted two iron wires into the porcelain cup, saying, electricity. No, thunder magic. Pay attention to controlling the voltage. Hmm, this step is difficult, we might fail many times. She turned the geomantic compass, her jade green fingers lighting up the word thunder, electric arcs flashed in the void, touching the iron wire, sizzle. The melted sodium chloride underwent a violent chemical reaction. Stop. Su Qian held his breath, looked into the cup, and a chunk of shiny metal formed, with some unconverted crystals and impurities around the edges that he was surprised that it had succeeded on the first try, the voltage was just right. Su Qian was pleasantly surprised, the method of electrolysis to produce sodium metal requires a voltage of about 6, 15 volts. He was prepared for repeated failures, but he didn't expect to have such good luck, it was successful on the first try, Chen Fuin and the middle-aged man couldn't wait to look into the cup. Inside was a chunk of silver metal, which at first glance, looked quite similar to silver, Chen Fuin's pupils contracted, and he was extremely shocked inside. Li Yechen clenched his fists tightly, staring blankly at the silver metal chunk, as if lightning had struck his mind, breaking all the fog. Please look, officials, Su Qian picked up the sodium metal, walked to the side of the writing desk, and threw it into the brushwashing basin. A fierce firelight lit up, and thick smoke billowed. Boom! The sodium metal reacted violently in the water, and the brushwashing basin cracked with fine cracks. This, this. Chen Fuin was stunned. This fake silver will explode when it comes into contact with water. This can explain why such a violent explosion occurred after the silver fell into the water, Su Qian explained, the middle-aged man murmured, from the beginning, we were misled. The mastermind used the explosion and the demonic wind to make us think it was a demon causing trouble, and focused our investigation on tracking and hunting. No wonder the Astronomical Bureau's technique of observing qi couldn't detect any demons. Su Qian added, after the tax silver fell into the water, the soldiers only found back more than a thousand tails of silver. If I'm not mistaken, this silver was laid on the top layer to deceive people. Everything fit perfectly, all the anomalies matched up. Su Qian. The middle-aged man's eyes were full of approval, good, you're good. He furrowed his brows, noticing Su Qian's skewed collar, and quickly straightened it for him. Su Qian was flattered, this official seemed to appreciate him greatly, Chen Fuin frowned, but if the silver is fake, where did the real silver go? The young woman in the yellow skirt, hearing this, also showed a serious look, the tax silver was transferred to the capital, handed over many times. If it's fake, a large number of officials will have to go to jail, and the difficulty of retrieving the silver, is like finding a needle in a haystack. Moreover, this matter has exceeded our jurisdiction, we have to report it to the emperor. Chen Fuin nodded, that was his point. The middle-aged man had a different view, his voice low, the tax silver was sent to the capital, handed over many times. If it was fake, it would have been discovered a long time ago. The only possibility is that it was recently swapped. Chen Fuin's eyes lit up, this greatly narrowed the scope of the investigation. Someone, prepare the sedan, prepare the sedan quickly, I need to go out. Chen Fuin rushed out of the inner hall urgently, the middle-aged man followed closely behind. Su Qian quickly called out, Lord Fuin, don't forget your promise to me. Hello. A yellow-skirted girl named Kai Wei, with twinkling eyes, asked, why can salt be turned into silver? She paused for a moment, then pulled out a sugar cane and handed it to Su Qian. Here, this is for you to eat. So she's trying to bribe me, the two adults had disappeared. Su Qian turned his gaze back, thought for a moment, and replied, I have seen the alchemical manuscript for turning salt into silver in ancient books. The girl with the yellow skirt widened her eyes. Where is this ancient book? Who is the author? Its name is, High School Chemistry. As for the author, well, People's Education Press. Su Qian said, the ancient book has been destroyed, but I still remember the content. The girl with the yellow skirt was a little breathless. Quickly, tell me. Su Qian sighed, I'm on the verge of death, and I really don't have the mood to teach. The girl with the yellow skirt gave him a white eye and said irritably, you're pretty slick. Our astronomical observatory doesn't interfere in politics. How to deal with you is up to the emperor. It's pointless to bargain with me. You can just take me in. With the status of the chief astronomer in the court, it should be no problem to want a scapegoat. Su Qian said that he had to add an insurance for himself. What if the tax silver couldn't be found back in time, the girl with the yellow skirt had bright and clear eyes, and she looked at him up and down. You are clearly a martial artist, why do you want to be a sorcerer? The practice should be started early. Most practitioners lay their foundation from childhood. 
Now it's too late for a martial artist to change to a sorcerer. It doesn't matter whether I hold the thigh or not. The main thing is that I admire the elegance of the chief astronomer. Su Qian said sincerely and seriously. Then you first tell me the content of the alchemy book. She pondered. The girl's eyes were clear and bright, with big apricot eyes and black pupils, clearly distinguished between black and white. Su Qian had only seen such clean and beautiful eyes in children in his previous life. The content is somewhat abstruse and profound. If it is just oral, I'm afraid you won't understand it. You need to be taught in depth so that it can be deeply rooted. Su Qian was fishing, Kai Wei rolled her eyes, unconvinced, in terms of alchemy, our astronomers are the leaders in the world. Hydrogen, helium, lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, neon, sodium, magnesium, aluminum, silicon, phosphorus. Su Qian recited fluently. What was he talking about? The girl was stunned for a long time, her eyebrows frowning, you're playing me. Our astronomical observatory only takes in children. She snatched back the sugar cane from Su Qian's hand, she walked away with light steps, her skirt flying that I am also a child. Su Qian opened his mouth, then understood that the astronomical observatory took in disciples from childhood, well, this road is not going anywhere, in a blink of an eye, two days passed, and Su Qian spent two days in the cell in fear that he was afraid that the tax silver would not be recovered in time. If it was after his exile, even if it was recovered, it would not change the outcome, then, what if Chen Fuin is a heart black maggot, monopolizing the credit and still dead? but there's nothing he can do about it, he can only do this much. What can a prisoner do? Su Qian felt the horror of feudal society again. Leave it to fate. Su Qian sighed clang. The iron door at the end of the corridor opened, and a jailer holding a fire stick came in, took out the key and opened the door. Su Qian, you can go now. Su Qian was overjoyed and clenched his fist tightly. Has the tax silver been recovered? Just follow me to sign and you can leave. The jailer looked at him. You're a lucky guy. What about my second uncle? Su Qian asked anxiously. Stop talking, just come. The jailer was very irritable, and he knocked Su Qian's hip with his fire stick, urging him to leave the cell under the arrangement of a yamen clerk, he signed and painted, and then got his clothes taken off when he was put into the big cell from the jailer. A yamen runner led him out of Jingzhou prefecture, from the back door. Et this time, the east was slightly bright, and the street was cold, clang. Su Jiping was awakened by the sound of the iron door opening. He opened his eyes, which were full of bloodshot, the disheveled Su Jiping, with a face similar to Su Qian's, is actually the biological son of Su Xinyan, whose facial features are too handsome and different from them, across a corridor in the opposite cell, Li Ru, who was in a deep sleep, trembled all over and woke up. She looked haggard and showed extreme fear on her face, the couple looked at each other across the corridor. Li Ru said sadly, husband, even if I die, I won't go to the Ministry of Education. She was 35 years old and well-maintained. She was a charming beauty. Even though she had been scared in jail for five days and looked haggard, she still couldn't hide the charm in her eyebrows and eyes, what is the Ministry of Education, it's a purgatory for women, the scarred Su Jiping opened his mouth, but couldn't say anything. Suddenly, hot tears flowed down. Wife, I'm sorry for you. We husband and wife will go to Huangquan together. In the next life, I will make up for you as a cow and a horse. It's just a pity for the children and my nephew. Five days have passed, and what awaits him is the execution. What awaits the female relatives is the Ministry of Education. In addition to Li Ru, there are two girls in the Su family, a 28-year-old eldest daughter and a 5-year-old girl they were curled up in the corner of the cell, and they were also awakened at this moment the 5-year-old girl rubbed her eyes and muttered, mother, she knew nothing about her fate, the 16-year-old girl sat up, her messy hair set off a white melon face, her small mouth was thin and rosy, her eyes were big and bright, her nose was not as delicate as most women, but was tall. Therefore, the features appear particularly three-dimensional, particularly delicate and beautiful, there is a kind of static sculpture beauty, she unconsciously leaned towards her mother, and her thick eyelashes trembled slightly with fear, several jailers with swords on their waists came in with big strides. Li Ru's eyes flashed with despair and determination. Su Jiping clenched his hands on the railing, his knuckles were pale, his steel teeth clenched. He lost the tax silver and neglected his duty. He admitted that he deserved to die, but he implicated his wife and daughter, and he couldn't close his eyes when he died, especially the little girl, who was only five years old, was going to be sent to the Ministry of Education to be raised, and her life was dark, how can parents be willing? Su Jiping, come with me, sign and leave after you can. The jailer opened the cell door, didn't put them in shackles, stood in the corridor, knocked the railing with the hilt of his knife, and signaled them to come out themselves. Su Jiping is loyal to the country and the king all his life, and his family is loyal, ah, uh, what did you say? Uncle Su was suspicious, what does this mean? You can leave. You just said you can leave. Su Jiping couldn't believe it for a moment. 
What's going on, aren't you taking me out to behead? I don't know. The jailer said impatiently. This is an order from above. If you want to know, go out and ask. Li Ru was in a daze and panic, holding her two daughters, following the jailer in silence, walking towards the end of the corridor. Old, husband, it won't be a trick, will it? How can it be so trifling? Su Jiping, who was injured, walked with a limp. He was also confused, with the joy of escaping from the dead, and the confusion of not understanding the situation. Li Ru had a thought in her heart, it must be New Year, it must be New Year who has been running around for us these days, helping us to make connections, so that the court can let us go. The more she thought about it, the more likely it seemed, and she cried with joy. Husband, don't forget, New Year's teacher is the Minister of Criminal Justice in the 18th year of Yuan Jing. Yuan Jing 18th year, it's more than 20 years ago. Su Jiping felt something was wrong, but couldn't think of anyone else he could rely on without a big backing in the officialdom. Maybe. I told you that our New Year is a dragon among men. Back then, I let him study martial arts, but you didn't agree. You had to let that little rabbit Su Qian study martial arts. Mother, rabbits are so cute, I want to eat rabbits. The five-year-old girl looked up at her little face, gnawing at her little finger, with the word, greedy, in her eyes. All day long you just know to eat. Li Ru, who was irritable, scolded subconsciously, looking at the dirty little girl, her face immediately softened, good girl, there will be rabbits to eat soon. Su Jiping was too lazy to explain to her the fact that, your son doesn't have the talent to study martial arts. No matter how many times he said it, his wife would automatically ignore it that I any mother's eyes, her son is always the best, when it came to signing and painting, Su Jiping took the pen from the clerk of the prefectural government. His fingers were trembling slightly. After signing his name and pressing his handprint, Su Jiping felt that he had achieved some kind of sublimation, just like a seed buried deep in the ground sprouting and seeing the sun the world suddenly became so beautiful, even though not a single copper coin had been added, the wife and daughters did not need to sign their names, just press their handprints. Su Jiping couldn't suppress his curiosity, and said with a bow, this sir, I don't know why I'm exempt from my sins. Li Ru immediately looked at the clerk. The case has been solved, and the tax money has been recovered, the clerk replied. The tax money has been recovered? Ha, huh, good, very good. The damned demon dared to rob our tax money, Uncle Su said, feeling quite exhilarated. After laughing, he realized that according to the laws of the Great Fong, although the tax money had been recovered, his dereliction of duty was also a fact, the recovery of the tax money was not his merit. How could the court spare him the death penalty, even if he was treated leniently, he would be exiled to the frontier. Master Su, here is your official robe, take good care of it, the clerk handed over the green robe of the 8th rank military official that had been removed earlier that he was reinstated. Su Pingji realized something was wrong. As he took the official robe, he said solemnly, Sir, could you please resolve my confusion? In theory, even if he was spared the death penalty, he shouldn't have been reinstated. The laws of the Great Fong stipulate that if an elder in the family violates the law, the offspring can take the blame and earn merits for the father, the clerk said. It really was Nian, my lord, Nian helped the court recover the tax money, Li Ru wept with joy. Nian. Su Pingji's eyes moistened, my good son. The clerk glanced at the emotional couple, it's your nephew Su Qianan, who helped the prefect solve the tax money case. He just left. Ning Yan. Su Pingji froze. Li Ru's tears were still hanging on her face, her joyful expression frozen. Two days ago, Su Qian was yelling in the prison to see the prefect, claiming he had important clues to report. Soon after, the prefect solved the case. According to the law, you are naturally safe due to his meritorious service, said the clerk. Is. Is that so? Su Pingji stuttered. He had raised Su Qian since he was a kitten, how could he not understand his nephew? Su Pingji suspected the clerk was lying, but he had no evidence. It was that rabbit-like nephew. Li Ru's face turned pale. Wasn't it their son who pulled some strings to save the family? How could it be the unlucky nephew who was in jail, with heavy confusion? Su Pingji led his wife and daughters out of the back door of the prefecture, and saw Su Qian, who was anxiously waiting at the door, fixing his messy hair. Seeing his nephew, the doubts buried in his heart became less important. The warm-hearted warrior felt a warm surge in his heart, his eyes reddened, and he strode forward. He wanted to give his nephew a hug, but felt it was too pretentious, and he couldn't lose face. He patted his shoulder hard, Ning Yen, good job. He almost knocked Su Qian to the ground. Uncle, you're at the peak of qi cultivation, we're a level apart, Su Qian said naturally, not at all awkward that he was surprised at this harmony. At the same time, he glanced over his uncle's shoulder at the three women behind him, hey, auntie, you two have such a miserable day, this thought uncontrollably surfaced, the schadenfreude didn't last long, as he was distracted by his sister's beauty, the young girl was dressed in a loose prisoner's uniform, her disheveled hair hanging by her classically delicate face. 
She had a high and prominent nose, which gave her a touch of mixed-race beauty at first glance, however, this age was the most innocent and pure time, which mixed to create a charm that made people unable to move their eyes away, damn, I actually have such a beautiful sister, Su Qian was shocked that I and the original owner's memory, the image of his sister was quite vague, probably because he didn't pay much attention to her. And because of his aunt's influence, he had some kind of resentment that he was not very friendly to his cousins, when she noticed her brother's fiery gaze, Su Lingwe timidly called out a brother and shyly lowered her head. Brother. Suddenly she heard a cry that Su Lingyin was five years old, just a little one, ran over, stopped abruptly in front of Su Qian, looking up at him. Su Qian waved his hand, I don't have any candy for you, I just got out of jail myself. It's worth mentioning that the original owner didn't like his cousins, but he was quite good to this youngest sister, because she finally didn't inherit her mother's looks. What's a jail? It's where you've been sleeping these past few days. Where's the other brother, did he bring candy? He didn't come. Oh. The little one looked disappointed. The other brother she was referring to was her biological brother, Su Xinyan, but she didn't yet know the difference between a cousin and a biological brother, this youngest sister wasn't very smart, she was a silly child, this must be inherited from her mother, that's what the original owner thought, finally, he looked at his aunt, Li Ru. This woman, who had always been domineering in front of Su Qian, probably never thought that one day she would need to thank her unlucky nephew with a low voice, the beautiful woman stiffly turned her head away, unwillingly said, thank you, Ning Yen. Just in time, a vague memory surfaced in Su Qian's mind when he was driven to the small courtyard next to the Su mansion by his aunt. Su Qian was furious and swore. Su Qian. Will definitely make something of myself in the future, you. Better not regret it, thinking about it now, it feels so awkward. Isn't this the aunt version of don't underestimate the poor young? Looking at the relationship between the original owner and his aunt from an objective third-party perspective, Su Qian felt that it was not entirely the beautiful woman's fault. Su Qian was a martial artist, consuming over a hundred tales of silver a year. This is equivalent to the savings of an ordinary family for 20 or 30 years. And it would have to be a diligent family. It's not surprising that his aunt has resentment, so Su Qian sincerely said, Auntie, don't be in a hurry to thank me. Let's have dinner when we get home, and then say it again. Li Ru immediately opened her big eyes and glared at her unlucky nephew. Su Pingji felt a chill run down his spine, and said sternly, Let's go home first. Su Xinyan staggered back to the Su mansion with a jug of wine. The home he had lived in for 19 years was now sealed, empty and desolate. Su Xinyan kicked open the front door, stepped over the threshold, and walked a few steps inside before turning back to close the door. Committing suicide was not a glorious thing, and it was not a dignified thing for a scholar to do, so he couldn't attract the attention of the authorities. He cared about his face. He walked from the outer courtyard to the inner courtyard, as if he had walked through a long life. He learned to read at the age of three, recited poems at five, and was familiar with the classics of the sages at ten. At 14, he entered Yunlu Academy for study. At 18, he became a scholar. To say that he was exceptionally talented was not an exaggeration, his intelligence and extensive knowledge shaped his proud character. He was always proud in front of his family, accomplished, glamorous, and the future pillar of the Su family. As a man of seven feet, he would rather die gloriously than live in disgrace. Thinking of this, Su Xinyan drank all the wine in the jug and smashed it on the ground. With a surge of alcohol, he rushed into the room, ground. Ink, picked up the pen, and wrote the most peak farewell poem of his life. Su Xinyan laughed three times, grabbed the paper, rushed out of the door, took out the prepared hemp rope, and hung it on the ginkgo tree in the inner courtyard. He was surprised that he was not afraid at all when facing death, only feeling unprecedentedly exhilarated. Suddenly, he somewhat understood those unruly and uninhibited scholars. Only when one has no fear in one's heart can one look down on the world. If he was not afraid of death, what else in the world was worth fearing? The capital city was bustling, known as the best city in the world. Su Qian slowly walked through the bustling ancient city, where cars were like water and horses like dragons. Shops lined both sides of the street, with banners and cloths fluttering in the wind. A line of poetry surfaced in his mind smoke willows paint the bridge, wind curtains green curtains, uneven hundreds of thousands of households. In fact, the capital city was more prosperous than Qian Tang in the poem. The geography of Defeng records that, in the early years of Yuan Jing, the population of the capital was more than 1.96 million. Now it's the 36th year of Yuan Jing, the population of the capital should have exceeded 2 million. Su Mansion, a large three entrance courtyard, had seven or eight maids and servants. Now, the servants and maids had been dismissed, the door was locked, and the house was empty. Auntie looked at the plaque on the front door, her feelings mixed. I don't know how Nyener is doing, he must be very worried about us, this child said before he was imprisoned that he would definitely save us. She said as she walked in, the price of houses in the capital city was high. This three entrance courtyard would cost at least 5,000 tails of silver. A 30% down payment would be 1,500 tails of silver. Damn, why do I have to think about housing prices even in another world? Su Qian showed a wry smile. Su Pingji comforted, Nyener is well versed in the classics, calm and reliable. 
he must still be running around for us at this time. Let's give him a surprise when he comes back. Damn. Su Qian's face changed. He knew that Su Xinyan was planning to commit suicide that I in the eyes of his uncle and aunt, Su Erlang was firm in mind, serious and calm, and reliable. He was a tenacious scholar. Ha ha ha, I hit Su Xinyan, am a free man in life and a defiant ghost in death. Su Xinyan, talented but the world is unjust. If the world did not give birth to me, Su Xinyan, the great abundance would be like eternal night, under the ginkgo tree, the scholar standing on the chair suddenly took off his crown and threw it away, shaking his head vigorously, his hair disheveled that he was wild and unruly, he was uninhibited, he put his head into the noose, and then saw his family with stiff expressions and dull eyes to Su Xinyan, am a free and easy man. Su Xinyan, talented but the world is unjust. If the world did not give birth to me, Su Xinyan, the great abundance would be like eternal night. Su Xinyan saw his unexpectedly returned family, feeling that he died a step too late. In the silent air, my aunt was the first to react, shrieking sharply, Nian, the couple worked together to rescue their son who had no will to live. My aunt held her son in her arms, her tears falling like rain. My second uncle stood to the side, sighing deeply. Su Qian and looked at his cousin, whose soul seemed lost, and felt a deep understanding, the three most embarrassing situations for a teenager, being caught by parents when making a slow motion with left and right hands, being overheard while commenting on the big butt of a female teacher, having your childish fantasies revealed to the public. Each one could make one role on the ground in shame that he had failed to die physically, but he had certainly died socially that I am trained, I won't laugh no matter how funny it is. Su Qian and started to chuckle to himself. Su Lingyu turned her head and gave her older brother a resentful look, silently accusing him of taking pleasure in others' misfortune. Su Ling Yin wanted to ask her brother for candy, but seeing the scene, she dared not ask. Su Xian Yen, being a scholar, quickly thought of a way to handle the situation. He rolled his eyes and fell unconscious, in a small courtyard belonging to Su Qian and, he stripped and soaked himself in a large bathtub. The cold water seeped into his pores, making his whole body feel refreshed, his body, at the peak of cultivation, was extremely resistant to cold after escaping the crisis of life and death, he could finally immerse himself and ponder some philosophical questions about life. Why are there no memories of the original owner's death or fainting? Su Qian and clearly remembered how he died, most likely from alcohol poisoning. But the original owner seemed to have no memory of this. As for Su Qian and himself, the cause of death was alcohol poisoning, due to excessive drinking after a promotion and pay raise, after resigning from the police station, he chose to start a business. The second year, he was beaten by society and decided to start from the grassroots. He became a diligent and conscientious worker. Su Qian and laughed heartily as he went out, invited a few friends to celebrate in a bar, because he could foresee his future life, he could afford the mortgage, pay the dowry, marry and have children. As long as the neighbor's surname was not Wang, it would be peaceful. Damn, he slapped the water, splashing water, and said angrily, I finally got the entrance ticket to the middle class, but then I was sent to the feudal society. It's too unlucky. There are still 600,000 for the down payment of the house in the bank card. Is the most miserable thing in the world that the person is still there, but the money is gone? No, it's not. It's that the person is gone, but the money is still there. Forget it, just consider it as inheritance for my parents, I don't know if the inheritance tax is high or not. Give me one more season and I'm sure I'll be able to reach the king. I haven't seen the final season of Attack on Titan. The national football team didn't win the championship, and I can't close my eyes in peace. Oh, forget about that. Damn, I didn't delete the 120G of wife material on my computer hard drive, if my parents find out, I'll be socially dead too. Unconsciously, he fell asleep and woke up when it was already dark, his body was soaked white, his fingertips wrinkled, Su Qian and put on clean clothes, and tied his hair in front of the bronze mirror. I in the bronze mirror, a young man's face was reflected, with thick eyebrows and sharp eyes. Due to years of martial arts practice, his facial features were firm. Although it's far from the handsome face of Tony Leung, the shy Louis Ku, and the good looks of the Communist Party in my previous life, it's still passable. Su Qian and nodded silently, moreover, his body was much stronger than in his previous life. At least he was a martial artist. But it may not be a good thing, I would rather cross to the real ancient times. That way, everyone is a weakling. Unlike here, there are too many masters, you may not have reacted yet, and your head would be gone. This world not only has monsters, but also a variety of cultivation systems. In addition to the martial artist system, which is known as the unlucky system, there are also sorcerers, Confucianists, Buddhists, Taoists, wizards, and Gu masters. Point six hundred years ago, the establishment of the Great Phone Kingdom, the first generation of the astronomical observatory, divided the levels for each system. Su Qian and was a ninth grade cultivator in the unlucky system. His second uncle was an eighth grade Peak Chi cultivator. Seventh grade was the God Cultivation Realm. Beyond that, 
Su Qianan didn't know. On the contrary, Su Qianan knew a lot about the sorcerer system of the Astronomical Observatory because the Astronomical Observatory is a cultivation system unique to the Great Feng Dynasty, and it is very high profile. The inventions and creations of the sixth grade alchemists have been integrated into thousands of households sorcerer system, ninth grade healer, eighth grade qi observer, seventh grade geomancer, sixth grade alchemist. Beyond that, Su Qianan didn't know what it was. Four other systems, Su Qianan, who has lived in the capital since he was a child, knows very little. At this time, a girl in a green skirt entered the courtyard. She was my aunt's personal maid, called Lu Yi. Master, the master is calling you to eat. Lu Yi's eyes were filled with joy, but her eyes were tired and haggard, she was sold to the Su family at the age of ten to serve my aunt. After the Su family's misfortune, the servants were dismissed, and she was worried about her future livelihood unexpectedly, just five days later, the Su family turned over. According to the young lady, all this was thanks to the master, the eighteen-year-old pretty little maid, at this time, seemed a bit shy in front of Su Qianan. Well, don't call me master. Su Qianan was very uncomfortable. But the master is the master. Lu Yi was puzzled. Well, at least I'm not surnamed Wu. The two left the small yard and entered the Su mansion. Lu Yi hesitated for a moment and said, Just now, the master and the mistress were quarreling. What happened? Su Qianan asked. It seems that the mistress must know how the tax money case was swapped, and who did it. The master couldn't answer, and they started quarreling. Lu Yi whispered, Master, you know, right? On the way back, Su Qianan told his second uncle that the tax money was not robbed, but was swapped by someone. At that time, my aunt didn't say anything, but she had been keeping it in mind, in the inner hall, as soon as Su Qianan stepped over the threshold, he heard a wailing cry. The little bean-sized Su Ling Yin raised her little arms behind her, leaned her body forward, raised her head, and launched a piercing sonic attack at her mother. My second uncle was calmly drinking his wine, Su Ling Yu was eating her food with her head down and Su Xian Nian hadn't recovered from the collapse of his character, he was silent and eating that my aunt held her forehead with her hand, looking like she had a headache. Seeing Lu Yi coming, she immediately said, take her away. Su Qianan looked at his crying little sister and asked kindly, what's wrong? Mother lied, mother said if we could go home, she would take me to Gui Yu Lu. The little bean cried, daddy just mentioned Gui Yu Lu. Gui Yu Lu is the top restaurant in the capital, only serving government officials and nobles, not catering to civilians and merchants. As a stupid child who can't remember the names of her brother and sister, she can remember Gui Yu Lu, mainly because she has been there once, this shows that this kid is not stupid, but her talent is used in the wrong place, old Su, you're really something, you know how to divert the disaster, even using your daughter as a tool. Su Qianan looked at Su Er Shu, who was drinking wine calmly, and his aunt, who had a headache but was helpless, Little Bean is my aunt's lifeline. She was just joking, we were in that situation. My aunt sighed. You even lied to a child, aunt, you're not trustworthy. Su Qianan instinctively retorted her, making the beautiful woman's chest heave with anger. Big brother, big brother, take me. Seeing Su Qianan's benevolent face, and even speaking for her, the little bean was overjoyed and ran to Su Qianan's feet, grabbing his pants and trying to climb up, Gui Yu Lu, one silver per person. Su Qianan said solemnly, Lu Yi, take her away. The little bean was taken away to my aunt kicked her husband and subtly nudged Su Qianan with her mouth. My second uncle felt a bit ashamed, looked at his son who always had a strong desire to know, but unfortunately, Su Xian Nian was socially dead, and dead people cannot speak, they can only eat, the food tasted average, mainly because there was no broth, after all, everyone had just returned home. Su Qianan ate as if chewing wax, he looked at his pretty sister unhappily, Ling Yu, why do you always sneak peeks at your brother? I, I. The young girl's face instantly flushed red and it became more embarrassing in front of her family. Her beautiful almond eyes were covered with a layer of mist, sparkling in the candlelight. Although I prefer my sister, it's quite satisfying to tease this little sister who can cry for a long time with a single punch. Su Qian thought. Su Lingyue puffed up her cheeks, raised her head in a resigned manner, and looked at Su Qian, I just want to know how my eldest brother solved the case from the files. Su Xinyan, who had been pretending to be non-existent, could no longer maintain his disguise and quietly raised his head. He prided himself on his intelligence and had also read the files, but after repeated studies, he found no clues. However, that day, Su Qian asked him for the files and immediately solved the case. Auntie didn't express her opinion, but her chopstick stopped, and she no longer chewed her food. There are no perfect crimes in the world. Except for coincidences, any man-made cases can be traced back to clues. Su Qian said. Su Xinyan couldn't help but straighten up, listening attentively. First, I noticed the problem with the tax silver through the root of its delivery and the weight of the silver, Su Qian explained his reasoning process. The more Su Xinyan listened, the brighter his eyes became, as if he had received enlightenment from the teacher in the private school. 
His hands under the table were tightly clenched into fists. When Su Qian finished, Su Erlang looked calm as if it was nothing special, not bad. Su Erlang always spoke contrary to his heart, and the family was used to it. The pretty 16-year-old sister lowered her head, hiding the admiration in her eyes. Su Pingji excitedly slapped the table, swearing in slang, so that's how it is, I didn't even notice. Su Xinyan glanced at his father, thinking, it would be strange if you could notice. Su Qian looked at his second uncle and remembered a phrase, it's a shame that my dad is illiterate, and a single curse can conquer the world. His second uncle was a warrior, and his literacy was limited to writing his own name, which was crooked and looked like a chicken claw. You rough guy, you can't even weigh. Auntie dissed her husband. Su Qian asked, when they were counting the silver, were they wearing hand guards? Su Erlang recalled for a moment. He was surprised, it seems so, how do you know? Is it really sodium? Su Qian looked at him gloomily, why didn't you mention it in the confession? It's a trivial matter. What's there to say? Su Erlang cursed, it's all because of that Lu guy who gave me a pot of osmanthus honey that day. You know my alcohol capacity, it's unfathomable, so I had a few drinks and didn't pay much attention to anything else. If you hadn't mentioned it, I would have forgotten. The most feared thing is you, such a pig teammate. If this was in the file, I could have analyzed the truth of the case faster, why bother to kill so many brain cells? Su Qian sighed. In the second uncle's view, this might be the same as what clothes someone else was wearing or what hairstyle they had. He had no idea that this was a suspicious point worth noting. So it seems that the blue mentioned by father is most likely the one who framed father. Su Xinyan pointed out sharply. It's all my fault for being confused and almost ruining the whole family. Su Pingji suddenly felt a bit sentimental, Ning Yen, your father and I fought back to back in the, the mountain and sea battle and vowed to survive together and make a name for ourselves. I survived, but your father died in battle. If it wasn't for your eldest brother who blocked the knife for me, I would have been the one who died. At that time, I thought that if I wanted to live better, I had to change my way of life. I couldn't be canon fodder anymore. So I let Nyener go to school and chose to let you practice martial arts. Actually, I was also being selfish. Auntie rolled her eyes, yeah, your heart is all with your nephew. That's over a hundred tails of silver a year. From what Auntie means, isn't Erlang your own? Su Qian swore that he didn't mean to say this, it was instinct that overrode his brain. The original owner had a lot of grudges against his aunt. You little rascal, what do you mean by saying that? Auntie slapped the table in anger. Su Erlang and Su Lingyue lowered their heads to eat, seeming to be used to it. Su Erlang muttered, enough, I just barely survived, and I have to listen to you quarrel. I'd rather die. Everyone lowered their heads to eat. Speaking of the battle of mountain and sea, Su Qian had some memory. The world is vast and boundless, with the great Feng dynasty ruling the central plains, proclaiming itself as the orthodox of the world. The great Feng established the country with military power and governed the country with Confucianism. At its peak, all nations came to pay homage. So far, the dynasty has lasted for 600 years. 20 years ago, the great Feng joined forces with various countries in the western regions to fight against the grassland barbarians in the north and the southern barbarians in the southwest at the Shanhaiguan Pass. All parties invested in soldiers, reaching millions of people. From the start to the end of the war, it only took half a year, and in half a year, millions of lives were lost. It was one of the most brutal wars in history, known as, the Battle of Mountain and Sea. Su Qian's father died in that war. With my knowledge as a keyboard warrior and the rules summarized from the street literature, no dynasty can escape the 300 years rule. The so-called 300 years rule is named by Su Qian himself. As a pseudo-historical enthusiast, he summarized a set of rules from the history of 5,000 years in his previous life. Apart from the feudal kings who ruled their own territories and the backward Zhou dynasty, no dynasty's national fortune lasted more than 300 years. Both the Song and Han dynasties were reorganized dynasties. Thinking about it, the 600 years of the Great Feng dynasty should be related to the power system of this world. Little Do Ding was brought back by Lu Yi. She was hungry and stopped crying. She was too short to reach the dining table, so she sat between Louis's legs and was fed by her. Mom, why do we have to live in a black room and we can't eat enough every day? Little Do Ding recalled her experience a few days ago. She called the prison a black room. No one at the table spoke, and Auntie showed a sympathetic look. Su Erlang sighed, Dad did something wrong. Little Do Ding, oh, and then said, I was hungry and woke up yesterday. I caught a bug with this on its head. She put two short fingers on her head. That was a cockroach, known as one of the two big snakes in the prison along with the rat. Everyone's face changed, both ashamed and sympathetic, letting a child suffer this hardship was their failure. You, you ate it. 
Li Ru's lips trembled, her eyes reddened. She didn't have this young girl until she was in her thirties. Although she was a bit slow, she loved her very much. Little Do Ding said crisply, I heard mom's stomach rumbling later. The atmosphere was silent for a moment, and everyone's heart sank. Auntie's face turned pale, and she asked tremblingly, then? Then I stuffed it into mom's mouth, and mom ate it so fast. Little Do Ding had a look of merit on her face. Auntie swayed for a few seconds and then pounced under the table, vomit, ao, ao, ao. Not long after, the pig-killing cries of a child echoed in the night sky. The night sky was as clear as a wash, adorned with twinkling stars, the tallest building in the great Fengjing city, the Star Observatory, was the office of the Heavenly Bureau. A young girl in a yellow skirt climbed up lightly. As she passed the seventh floor, she heard a noisy commotion coming from the alchemy room. A group of alchemists in white robes were arguing fiercely. Why did it fail again? The steps were so simple. I've said it before, it must be the dosage of salt that's wrong. No, I think it's the water. Is it the fire? I just saw Brother Wan boil the salt. This is too hard, the alchemy spell to turn salt into silver is too hard, I can't do it. The girl named Kai Wei twitched the corner of her mouth and muttered, these people are still trying to make fake silver. Two days ago, she had brought back the story of turning salt into silver to the Heavenly Bureau. At first, her brothers didn't believe it, could salt be turned into silver, even a three-year-old wouldn't believe it, but soon, the tax silver case was solved. The emperor thought that the power of fake silver was very powerful and quite magical, so he ordered the Heavenly Bureau to create fake silver. So, the alchemists of the Heavenly Bureau began a strenuous work, throwing themselves into the blessing of 996 day and night from two days ago, they had been fighting and failing repeatedly. Kai Wei, it's Kai Wei. Someone shouted excitedly. I in an instant, a group of haggard faces turned around, and a pair of eyes suddenly lit up. Kai Wei, how exactly is fake silver made? Kai Wei, come over and help me see if there's a problem with the steps? You are the only one who has successfully made fake silver. They surrounded the girl in the yellow skirt, Kai Wei had no choice but to enter the alchemy room and watch the process of her brothers making fake silver. It failed again. An alchemist in white robe lamented. Kai Wei, where did it go wrong? The white-robed men put on a humble attitude. There's no problem, that's how I made it last time, Kai Wei pondered, this is an ancient alchemy spell, which is profound and obscure. It's not something you can learn just by learning it. You need to understand it deeply and teach it in a simple way to root it firmly. I'll teach you a mnemonic, remember it well. The brothers listened attentively. Hydrogen, helium, lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, neon, sodium, magnesium, aluminum, silicon, phosphorus. Kai Wei gathered her energy and uttered this remarkable mnemonic, word by word. What does this mnemonic mean? The brothers were impressed, they understood each word, but were confused when they were combined that I don't know what this is either, Kai Wei maintained a profound smile. Genius, genius, the person who wrote this mnemonic is a genius in alchemy. A white-robed brother sighed where is the genius, brother, don't imagine things. Kai Wei kept her smile. Kai Wei, who told you this mnemonic? Did you meet a high-level alchemist and get his guidance? Kai Wei thought, good question. She lightly threw the blame off. That person is called Su Qian, the nephew of Su Pingji, a seven-rank green robe in the royal knife camp, you can find him. As soon as they heard it was a martial artist, the white-robed men were not happy. A joke, our heavenly bureau is full of talents, do we need to find outsiders to create fake silver? And it's a martial artist. Won't it become a joke if it gets out? According to different cultivation systems, several interesting chains of contempt were formed, the Taoist school looks down on the Buddhist school, and the Buddhist school despises it in return, the sorcerers look down on the wizards, the wizards look down on the witch doctors, and the witch doctors look down on the sorcerers, and then, the Taoist, Buddhist, sorcerer, wizard, and witch doctor all look down on the martial artists. As for the Confucian school, I'm sorry, to be blunt, everyone. Present is rubbish, however, the Confucian school has declined in recent years. Kai Wei, you come and guide us. Kai Wei, head, next time for sure. She squeezed out of the group of white-robed brothers and continued to ascend that I in fact, she didn't understand either, last time in the county office, she made fake silver in one breath. After that, Kai Wei tried again privately and failed, she completely replicated the previous process, but it just failed, and she didn't know why, the top of the star observatory is not a normal eaves, but an octagonal platform, which corresponds to the eight diagrams, therefore, it is called the eight diagrams platform. At the edge of the eight diagrams platform, an old man in white robes was lying on the table, holding a wine glass in his hand and propping his head with the other, looking at the city below in a half drunk state. Kai Wei wisely did not disturb him. Her master usually did nothing, 
and liked to sit on the eight diagrams platform to drink and watch the scenery. He also didn't like to be disturbed, holding a glass of wine and squinting his eyes, he said he was concentrating on watching the world. Kaiwei is here. The old man in white robe smiled. Master. Kaiwei blossomed into a smile, trotted over, stood on the edge of the eight diagrams, her skirt flying. What rewards did the old emperor give you? A few hundred tails of silver, a few pieces of silk. Kaiwei said, Master, what exactly is fake silver? I don't know. Is there anything in the world that Master doesn't know? Too many, too many. The old man in white robe laughed, I don't know where those thieves went 19 years ago. You always say that the thieves from 19 years ago were hateful, but you never tell me who they were and what they stole. The old man in white robe stood up, stood on the edge of the eight diagrams platform, and sighed, what they stole was extraordinary. Do you know who made the fake silver? The Heavenly Bureau is the origin of the sorcerer system. All the alchemists in the world, even if they are not from the Heavenly Bureau, must have a connection with the Heavenly Bureau. Behind the tax silver case, there is an alchemist involved, and the creation of this strange object is by no means ordinary. Of course I know. In the small courtyard, in the main house, Su Qian lay on the bed, staring blankly at the crisscrossing beams under the moonlight coming in from the window. He was worrying about his future, feeling a bit anxious and confused, and a bit excited with my status as a high quality product of nine year compulsory education. All the knowledge in my mind is top notch that I can easily stand out in a backward monarchical society and become the most outstanding flower, however, a society where the monarchy is supreme often means that human rights cannot be guaranteed. Today I can be a model in a nightclub, and tomorrow I can be exiled, this is a phenomenon that would make any modern person worried at as he thought about it, Su Qian fell asleep. When he woke up, it was bright. He put on his black official uniform, tied his belt, tied his long hair, and hung his knife around his waist that he was upright and handsome that there's no denying that ancient clothes have a bonus to looks and temperament, but it's too troublesome to go to the bathroom that he jumped over the wall to his second uncle's house for breakfast, and the uncle and nephew went to work together. Su Pingji returned to his original position, everything was as before, Changgul County office is a county in the suburbs of the capital, and the office is in the city, about six or seven miles away from the Su house. Su Qian didn't have a horse or a carriage, so he had to take the number 11 bus, and it took about 15 minutes to get to the county office, the Changgul County office faces south with two human-sized stone lions at the entrance. On both sides of the reddish-brown gate, there are large drums with peeling paint, the structure of the county office is worth mentioning. The largest is of course the county magistrate, called the chief official. He has two deputies, one is the county magistrate, and the other is the chief secretary. These three were high-ranking government officials. In Su Qian's era, they were part of the establishment, below these three officials was the historian, also known as the head official, but they had no rank and were not considered influential, next were the three divisions and six departments, the three divisions were the ceremonial, law enforcement, and strong divisions, responsible for ceremonies, security, and arrests respectively, while the six departments corresponded to the six departments of the imperial court. Su Qian was a constable in the law enforcement division, commonly referred to as a bailiff in the Ming dynasty, upon entering the Yamen, he happened to see the historian checking the roll call. Li, the head official standing in front of the hall, saw Su Qian with his waist knife and was taken aback, his expression was as if he had seen a ghost in broad daylight. The Yamen runners noticed their leader's strange expression and turned their heads to look. Then, they too wore the same ghost seeing expression. Su, Su Qian, are you a human or a ghost? Someone asked with a trembling voice. Li, the head official, noticed Su Qian's shadow on the ground and relaxed a bit. He said in a calm tone, What nonsense are you talking about in the public hall? Do ghosts have shadows? When the others heard this, they all breathed a sigh of relief. Su Qian thought for a moment and replied, Perhaps I'm a walking corpse. Li, the head official, was greatly shocked, and the Yaman runners were tense. Su Qian quickly saluted, Just kidding, greetings to the head official and my colleagues, I've been released from prison. Li, the head official, asked, What happened? They had heard that the Su family had been imprisoned because of the tax silver case. Of course, it's because I atoned for my sins through meritorious deeds. The emperor was lenient and pardoned the Su family's crimes. Su Qian immediately repeated the story, but he attributed the credit to his second uncle, and took out the certificate given by the Jingshu Yemen.at the same time, he had a clear understanding in his heart. Although the tax silver had been found, the verdict had not yet been delivered, which meant that the case of the missing tax silver had not yet been settled. After all, it had to go through the process, which wouldn't be so fast, therefore, the Yaman runners of Changla County Yaman still didn't know about this, after the roll call was over, a few familiar bailiffs immediately came up to congratulate and celebrate. Ning Yen, you must treat us to a meal. In this era, friends were addressed by their courtesy names, not their given names. When introducing oneself, one used their given name, not their courtesy name. Right, you must have good luck after a great disaster, you have to treat us. 
I heard that the brothel on Linchue Street has just bought a new batch of courtesans, Ning Yen, shall we go together tonight? Inviting them to drink was okay, but asking me to pay for sleeping with women was too much. Su Qian was about to decline, saying he had no money, when he suddenly stepped on something hard. He looked down and it turned out to be a piece of broken silver, was it really good luck after a great disaster? He immediately stepped on it and looked around casually without changing his expression, when everyone else had walked a few steps ahead, Su Qian quickly bent down to pick it up and put it into his money pouch without any change in his expression, after sitting in the side hall on the west side for a few minutes, late, the head official, came in with a gloomy face and looked at Wang, the head bailiff, old Wang, the county magistrate wants us to go to the inner hall. Wang, the head bailiff, made a bitter face and left without a word. Su Qian watched Wang's disappearing back and asked, What's wrong? The head doesn't look very well. While you were in jail these few days, a murder case happened on Kongping Street. The victim was a wealthy merchant. The county magistrate was furious and scolded Wang every day. Just because a merchant died, the county magistrate didn't need to be so furious. Su Qian was cracking melon seeds since ancient times, human life has always been a big case but as the county magistrate of a county attached to the capital, a fifth-rank official, it was not necessary to be so furious. Well, the merchant had some connections with a certain high official in the censorate. I guess there must be pressure from there. The Yaman runner said, and, this year is the year of Gengzi. Gengzi year? Su Qian didn't get it. The imperial inspection. The Yaman runner pointed out, 